Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be editing a photo from the Photos in Color community, but I'm going to use it to show you how to enhance a story inside Lightroom. Theme tune. Do 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 do. I'm telling a story. Ooh, what story am I telling? Meow. Meow. Now I was meowing because I was a cat. Now I'm going to be editing a photograph sent in by Erin Elkin. So thank you so much for this image. And it's of a cat. Now I'm going to be doing a lot of edits on this um, image today. So it might not be exactly the best end result, but it is showing you lots of different techniques on what you can do to an image. But most of the things I'm going to talk about is all about story and how to apply focus and add drama to an image. And also, I make it a little bit too purple or pink. I've gone back and had a look at it. I don't like it. And you might be wondering, well, how have I seen what I've already done if, if I'm about to do it? Well, that's because I recorded this video about three weeks ago, and then I realized that this section of it, I was completely out of focus. So I've had to re-record the beginning. But what you're gonna see is when I go, I'm gonna look inside Lightroom now. I'm gonna change what I'm wearing in the little box at the bottom. So let's jump into Lightroom and have a look. So here we are. This is the photograph by Erin Alkin, and um, let's see, it was taken on the Nikon D610 using the, oh, the 24 to 70, which is part of the um, Nikon trilogy of awesomeness. Um, it's the middle lens of that, the 1424, then the 24 to 70 2.8, that's this one, and it's just absolutely amazing, taken at 42 millimeters. Now, before we get into this, so well, we'll jump into the develop module so we can have a look at it. But essentially, it's of a cat. The internet loves cats, so I hope you all love this tutorial. But essentially, the cat's going somewhere. It's on the prowl, it's doing something, maybe attacking something over here. So we wanna enhance that story. We wanna see if we can tell that story even more. So let's get started. Now, usually I'd start off with the basic panel here, but what I'm going to do today is I actually want to affect quite a lot of the light before I actually do an edit on the rest of the image. That's because the base of it, I want to, to actually alter a little bit. And this is, let me show you how, what I'm going to do. So I've come into the graduated brush tool and I have a tutorial on this one, I believe. Um, so then what we're going to do here is I'm just gonna pull back the exposure. And what I'm going to do, because the cat's coming over here somewhere, so I want to create an idea that the cat is coming from here, going to here. So therefore it's coming from somewhere that's dark and going to somewhere that's light. Now I do this often by creating this kind of a triangle like this of dark areas. Now that's gone way too much. And the reason is because I've covered a lot of the cat. So I come into the brush module of the graduated filter. I hit O so I can see where the, it's taken effect. And then I go in and I hit erase. Now what I'm gonna do here, anywhere that it's touching the cat, I'm just gonna erase it. And I'm not gonna be too strict about this. Um, and I'm gonna pull down, once I've done most of it, my flow so I can kind of, kind of fade out a little bit. And also where these highlights are, which is the line of focus, I don't want to lose that energy, which is kind of in this image in those areas. Great, now let's click on the other one and we're gonna do exactly the same. So that one little area here I really like. I've already darkened this area so we can just smudge that out a hair. And then it's on the cat. So we'll just, I wish I knew the name of the cat's, the, the, the cat's name, I just don't. It would be cool if I did so I could be like, oh, Harry the cat. Um, so if you're watching Erin, then please tell me your cat's name. I'm gonna bring that back that tree as well, because it was, I kind of got rid of it too much. There you go. That looks really, really nice. So we'll come out of this. Let's look at the before and the after. See how now there's a little bit of drop. The cat's going somewhere. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is also inside the graduated filter. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna add a little bit more focus. So although it's a nice shallow depth of field, I'm actually gonna help that by reducing the sharpness a lot and the clarity a little bit, adding another graduated filter tool. And essentially what I'm doing is creating, uh, it's like a tilt shift effect. I'm holding down shift so that it, these lines are nice and straight. And I'm just drawing those on like so. Again, I've gone all over the cat. So I'm gonna to go to brush. 
up here and a raise. Now, again, what I just said out is kind of like a tilt shift effect. Um, if you want to know how I do, why I'm doing this or the technique that I'm using, then I do have a tutorial on my channel for tilt shift. I know that for sure. So let's just paint it off the cat. Again, I'm not, I'm kind of not spending a lot of time to get it really accurate. I will auto mask and then paint back in where I think I've missed it. Lightroom is not a masking, doesn't do masking particularly well, but it does do it okay. And in these moments when there's some clean lines like the ear, the cat, then the Lightroom will do a really good job. Okay, let's click on the other one. This one's a lot easier down here. We'll just erase, get rid of the mask like so, the auto mask, sorry. And let's just paint it off a little bit on the cat. I think that's going to be pretty much. And then what I often do when I do these things is I paint, I just whip around and I paint some areas out. What I find is it, it keeps it looking that little bit more realistic when I come back. Great. So before and after, we're already starting to go somewhere. But the next thing I want to do is focus on the cat is here. Look at the line of the cat. Head down. It's looking here. It's what it's looking at. So I'm going to help the story of this by radial filter, drawing a circle where the cat is looking, like so, to hit O to turn off that, the view of the mask, and I'm actually gonna boost the exposure and make it nice and yellow and warm, okay? So now if we look, the cat is definitely looking somewhere, definitely. So you might be wondering why, I, why would I have just added in that thing? Well. It, what it does is it allows us to, to draw some focus into this image, but it's kind of just a washy circle. So again, I've gone into brush, erase, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to create it so that it's actually, I'm actually gonna paint out this whole side of it so that it's actually coming out towards the cat. And again, I'm just gonna paint off the top. I'm gonna paint down here a little bit. There you go, and what's happening now, in fact, I'm just gonna pull it back off the cat's face a little bit. So now what we can see is the cat is definitely going to this area, but I think I actually want that yellow to be hitting up here a little bit too. So we can actually click on this, and this is the great thing is brush A, so make sure it's actually painting it on. And what's happening, I'm gonna pull back, is now I can paint that same effect anywhere on the image. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add that color and those highlights down to kind of the back of the cat so that it really is, and on these highlights here, it really is something that's actually coming out towards the cat. Yes. So now when we look, again, what we're, what we're doing is we're just trying to bring in all of these different features. So now let's go before and after. The cat is now going somewhere. I think I've overdone the yellow. Sorry, I keep having to go. This is a lot of editing, and this is why we use these things so we can go in and re-edit them. This looks really nice. So now I've got to this point, now I can go in and make the edit for the rest of the image. So, first of all, I'm gonna pull back my exposure a little bit, so I want to make it that little bit moodier, but I am gonna lift the shadows back up. So I'm counteracting a little bit just to bring back some of these elements here. Looking fantastic. Now, I don't think I really need to do anything else um, with the basic module, it looks fantastic. But what I am going to do is come down to the HSL and we're gonna look at there's so much green in this image, we're gonna move that around. Now greens live inside green, yellow, and orange actually, not just the green, well grass does anyway. There's a lot of yellow in grass. So if I move the yellow slider, look at the color of the grass and everything around it, I can change it. So I'm actually gonna to go towards the oranges. I want to warm this image up. And again, the greens itself, I can go green, or I can actually go towards the yellows a little bit. Again, smoothing this image out a little bit. And then the actual reds, what I can do, if I, oranges, sorry, if I went towards the yellows, it's good. look at this section here. It's just gonna go pure green. I don't like that. I wanna go the opposite direction and keep in the difference there so that we do have those reds in the image. And it's looking fantastic. Now, saturation. I'm gonna pull back the saturation on the greens just a hair. And then the luminance of the greens, okay, I wanna keep them nice and bright. I don't wanna pull it back because it's gonna crush the image. I'm just gonna lift that up a little bit. That for me, starting to look fantastic. Well, 
with the blues, I can't because I've, I've, I've lost my highlights, so I can't bring back the sky. Can you see those lines? It looks horrible. So again, you can affect skies amazingly using the, the, the brush tool, the HSL. So um, I have a tutorial on HSL. The next thing that I want to look at is the tone curve, and I definitely have a tutorial on the tone curve. We'll start off in RGB. If you don't see this, there's a little button down here. If you only see this, click on that, and that's going to allow you to come back into the RGB mode, which is great. Now, what we're going to do is go into the reds, and I'm going to lift the reds throughout, so I want to warm this image up. Great. Then I'm going to go to blues, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the blues in the, um, so I'm going to boost the blues in the highlights like so. So now we've got a kind of a crossed processed feel before and after. Look at that. Crossed processed feeling, which is great. Then we're going to bring in the greens and all I'm going to do with the greens is I'm going to pull the greens backwards a little bit. So it's going to add some, um, a little bit more reds and purples into that. Now I don't really think I need to do anything else apart from maybe, let me just crush these greens a little bit. There you go, a little bit of a matte effect, but just a hair. Great. So now the next section I want to go to is split toning. Because with split toning, you can really alter the way that an image feels. So for that, I'm going to go into my highlights and I'm actually going to add purples to this. Let's add this in. So you can see I've added too much and the color's not right. Now I just found out somebody left me a great comment on how to do this, and I love it. If you hold down the option or alt, button and then it essentially sets it to 100% so you can pick a color that works best with your image. So for example, this purple doesn't work, this purple does work. So now when I have this in my image, it actually works with my image as opposed to against it. Then in my shadows, I'm actually going to use yellows. Usually I do it the other way, but for this image, I do want to do it kind of this way around. And I'm gonna pull it back towards my shadows. A hair. Great. Now, before and after, it's looking very dramatic now. Now, I'm actually gonna to go to the very bottom and go to the camera calibration. This is used to change the base level of the colors of the file so that you can do all of your other edits. I actually like to use it later on like in a moment like this, where I can really change my colors a little bit. And I'm gonna bring my red primary down to the left, and also the hue of the green, watch what happens. I can lift this, and all of a sudden my image has this amazing cross-processed feeling, where you look at the grass and the color difference is really stunning. The greens, the yellows, and the reds. So now let's look at the before and the after, and I'm loving this. Blues, I'm not really going to do any of this because I can go all the way to the reds and give it a red tone or all the way and give it a more of a green tone. I'm going to leave it at just a little, going to pull it back towards the reds a little bit. Now, I like this, but now I want to boost my contrast. No, I don't. I'm going to leave that. Instead, I'm going to use the radial brush tool and I'm going to add a little bit of focus to the cat because that's what we've been ignoring in all of this is the cat, but I wanted to set the scene first. So now I'm going to Again, direct this light along the line of the cat. I'm going to invert the mat, not have it inversed, and then I'm going to bring these, um, bring it, make it a little bit darker. Okay, like so. But again, what I'm going to do is brush, erase, and what I want to do is I really do want to pull back this line that the cat is inside of. Okay, for where, what did I call it, Charlie? I can't remember, I thought I named the cat earlier. Um, but I wish I did have a name for it. So maybe David, David the cat. Sheila. Ooh, Elspeth. Elspeth the cat. So what I've done is I've just painted all of that off a little bit. Then I'm gonna take the brush tool and I'm gonna counteract it by boosting the exposure, lifting my, oh, my shadows and my highlights just a little bit like so, and I'm gonna boost the clarity and literally Paint over the cat. Paint over Elspeth. Salvador the cat. Oh, I like Salvador. We're gonna go for Salvador the cat. And I'm always trying to, wherever I focus here, I add the same amount to this one area of focus, and that's what keeps it looking that little bit more real. Now, I do want to come back into this one. Where I added this, I've lost too much down here. So I'm gonna lift it back up, and I'm gonna go into the brush, 
arrays. And this is what is amazing about Lightroom and all these things. I can always go back in and alter this. It's completely non-destructive, which, which really is kind of amazing for such a powerful piece of software. Great. So now I'm going to leave this image there and go before, great image, and after, drama, story, feeling. Let me lift up the exposure. They, there we go. There we go. So drama and feeling and everything. Before, one more time. Great image. And after, oh, I often forget to do this in my tutorials because I'm too busy. And that's my, just going to straighten the image. Okay, so you can see I'm now wearing this shirt. Again, not the black t-shirt that I was wearing in the tutorial. Anyway, I hope you like this tutorial. And as you can see, I made a lot of changes. And actually, I don't love the purple effect that I put on there. But it was a great way to demonstrate those features for you. If you like this tutorial, or don't like the tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more videos coming in the future. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. See you.